The Clarno Basin's geologic formations tell a story of drastic change over the past 50 million years. The vast, dry plain we see today was once a lush rainforest. Volcanic activity, along with water and weather, have shaped and sculpted the land into the towering fortresses we see today. Rocks are wonderful storytellers, and this rock has a great story to tell. I love telling stories. And so I can look at this rock and think about its history, think about the fact that if I were sitting here 28 million years ago, there would be probably a myohippus running across the top of it, a pagonodon stalking it. And so rocks are wonderful time machines. And, and I love that imaginative storytelling component of geology. These seemingly immovable walls and pillars are actually fluid and changing. The Earth is always adding more layers, but also slowly eroding away. Over millions of years, volcanic activity has created layers of rock, the Clarno Formation, the John Day Formation, and the Columbia River Basalt. The lowest and oldest formation is the Clarno. Clarno Formation is about 50 to 40 million years in age, and it represents volcanoes that were here um, on Oregon's first coastline. They're a lot like the Cascades today. Between 40 to 50 million years ago, erupting volcanoes pushed floods of mud across the land, trapping everything in its path and hardening to rock. Falling ash from later volcanoes created the John Day Formation 20 to 40 million years ago. John Day Formation is really neat because it records climate change from the, the tropical climate of the Clarno Formation when bananas grew here all the way to a much grassier ecosystem like we have today. Volcanic ash, as hot as 350 degrees Celsius, spread across the landscape, fusing into the layer called an ignimbrite. The top layer is the Columbia River basalt that formed from a giant lava flow that spread across nearly all of Oregon. Columbia River basalts are Oregon's biggest flood basalt province and they're about 15 to 16 million years old. And they kind of cap most of the geologic record in, in this area. Together, these layers form a dynamic array of colors and textures. These massive layers of rock are constantly being eroded by rain, snow, and strong winds into pinnacles, overhangs, and plateaus. So the columns in the Clarno Palisades are there because they're actually sort of hoodoos. And there is a cap rock, a hard rock on the top of most of those that protects the soft underneath from erosion. Beneath every hard rock on the top there's a protected area and that develops into a column just like this rock would be protecting my hand. In this desert rain comes in bursts carving gullies in the rock. We have a, a really arid xeric system here that is often driven by, by large major events. And so if you have a system that's stable and then suddenly there's a big rainstorm, you get a lot of gullies eroded, you get sudden erosion events. And that's what really drives the kind of, of uh, landforms that we see here. The rocks are often more exposed, there's less soil, they're, they, they're eroded episodically. As the rock faces erode, air pockets, as well as rocks and logs trapped in the ancient mud flows, open up nooks and hollows. As you can see in, in this rock, this is a John Day Formation ash flow. Tough, and it's got little nooks and crannies that can be homes for animals um, that are here because when this erupted, it was a big gassy, gas-rich rock that had a lot of cavities in it. So these cavities now are, are homes to animals today. These spaces provide shelter, shade, and safety. Here, a porcupine has found this hole in the rock face to make its den. When you look at, at rocks and landscapes, it is fluid on several different levels. It's fluid in that fluids are molding this. It's fluid in that most of these rocks were fluid when they came into place. And it's fluid in the long time span that the life of a rock encompasses. So to a rock, 28 million years isn't really very long. Um, and pieces of this rock are even now being eroded, flowing 
basically through the atmosphere, through the, the water system, they're flowing out into the ocean where they'll become more new rocks in the future, starting a whole cycle again. So uh, when you look at landscapes, you have to think of several things. One of them is that landscapes are four dimensional. They have the three dimensions we're used to and then the dimension of time. These rocks are ancient storytellers just waiting to reveal more secrets with the passing of time.